next up I'm going to go through question four on the seminar sheet. So this is looking at total impedance of the series connected inductor capacitor network. So we need to just find the total impedance and you know we've looked at this in class so we've seen that if we have, remember we've got things that are measured in ohms here okay. So previously we had R1 and R2. We could say that Rs because they're both in series was equal to R1 plus R2 and all complex impedance is doing is adding these together but because we've got once again that pesky phase component we need to take that into account. So what we can say is instead of having R1 and R2 we can have Z1 and Z2 you notice I've changed my pen to a lovely purple colour. Z1 and Z2, so Z total is equal to Z1 plus Z2. Okay, so you know previously I've talked about calculating the reactances in ohms. So we've got XL and XC, and I've said you always need to take into account the operating frequency. Well, the good news here is because they've already been converted into reactances, so they're already in ohms, we don't need to worry about that. This is the correct value for this frequency. So we need to add them together, but the main thing to remember is the phase. So for this inductor, it's going to be plus J 45 ohms. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice went really weird there. And here it's going to be minus J 58 ohms because of this phase shift. So with inductors, we've got that plus, 50 plus 90 degrees or plus J. And for capacitors, we've got that minus 90 degrees or minus J. So we need to take into that account. So um, essentially a complex impedance is made up of a resistance and a reactance. And the reactance part is going to be your J term effectively, okay? So that's what we end up with. So the resistance is in ohms and that's just R and reactance is X. So Z is equal to some resistance plus some reactance, okay? And the underlining bit doesn't mean anything, it's just me highlighting points. So we can add these together. So we first of all we're going to write them in the full form. So we can say X of L is equal to naught because there's no resistance plus J 45 ohms and Xc is equal to zero because there's no resistance there. Only resistors have that resistance plus, and it's a minus this time, minus J58 ohms. And then if we just add these together, we just, you know, add them together like you would do at primary school basically with your adding. So Zt is equal to, well, there's no real parts, so that's still zero. And then we've got plus J45 and then minus J58. So what we end up with is minus J13 uh, ohms. Okay, so the total impedance is zero minus J13 ohms in rectangular form or in polar form. Remember, polar form is just a phasor diagram. So if we wanted to plot this, okay, we'd have the real and imaginary axis. We've done loads of practice of this. So if we wanted to do, remember the imaginary, this is plus J. I don't know why I keep doing my pluses like that. I've got J on the mind and this is minus J. So if we plotted a phasor of this, we'd have this zero real part and just minus 13 on the J axis. So draw another line here. This is meant to be on the axis. It's just like I suck at drawing with this stylus. So that would be minus 13 or just 13, but it's in that direction. And this is the angle, okay, which as you can see is 90 degrees. So if we wanted to write it in a polar form, we'd say ZT is equal to a magnitude of 13 at an angle of plus 90 degrees in ohms. And either of these answers are correct. They're interchangeable. They're just the different ways of expressing the same thing. So I want to talk about different languages. We've got your rectangular form over here and your polar form over here. It's just like speaking two slightly different languages and you now have the skills to translate between the two. Question five, the final question. Um, We've done some of this before, okay? So this is just a more complex version of one of the earlier questions where we found the current. So once more, we've got, we know that the total voltage around the circuit is equal to the square root of the resistance, the voltage across the resistor squared, plus um, the sum of the voltage across the inductor minus the voltage across the capacitor, and then that's squared, because it's just a triangle, it's a phasor diagram. Once again, we don't know what I is, okay? So we need to find I before we can find the 
voltage drops across each of those components. We know always Ohm's law, V is equal to I, R. Oh, I'm going to draw like sunshine around it. Ah, oh, 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 be happy, it is Ohm's law, it is God to us electrical engineers. So we can rearrange. Because we want to find the current, we can go from voltages into a current multiplied by a resistance plus a reactance, all squared and then square rooted. So we can now go on to solve this, OK? I think the main thing that might trick you out here is uh, this resistor here, OK? So if we look at this circuit, we can see it's a series circuit and we've got a capacitor this speaker which we've just said we can just treat as an 8 ohm resistor so you can basically ignore the fact it's a speaker and just draw it like it's just an 8 ohm resistor okay you can redraw it if you want and then a 2 milli henry inductor and it goes round and round and round so effectively this 8 ohm resistor is in series with the other 8 ohm resistor so we could replace that whole thing and just have a circuit I'm going to draw it over here so there's a bit more space okay so there's my capacitor and now I'm going to have my new resistor which represents the speaker which is 8 ohms plus this resistance down here by the source which is also 8 ohms so that is equal to 16 ohms Right, then we keep coming around. Then we have our inductor, and we come around. I'm going to stick the source here because there's a bit more space. And then it looks much more like a circuit that we know how to cope with. So we've got our, we've got a capacitor which is 47 microfarads. We've got a 16 ohm resistor, and we've got a 2 millihenry inductor. So we can now solve this. So what we can say is Vs is equal to I times R squared, which is the total resistance. That's 16 squared plus, and remember XL and XC, we've got XL is equal to 2 pi f of l so i'm going to solve for 200 hertz and then the idea is the same for each one so x of l because you need to recalculate it is 2 pi times 200 times 2 millihenries which gives you x of l is about 2.5 ohms so that can go in here 2.5 and now we need xc, so I'm going to come over here because I'm running out of space. 1 over 2 pi f of c. You'll need to know this. You should get round to writing it so much you can do it in your sleep. 2 pi times, once again, we're going to go for the 200 hertz option, times c. So that's 47 times 10 to the minus 6. There we go. Um, which will give you xc, in this case, is equal to... What, 16.9 ohms. Okay, so we can now put this in here. Minus 16.9. That's all going to be squared and then square rooted. And we'd know Vs because Vs is given here. It's 15 volts. So we end up with 15 is equal to I times 16.5. Which means that I is equal to let me see, 0.7 amps. Okay, so now we've got I. Remember, I is the current that flows through all of this. Now we've got I, we can find the voltage drops because we know that um, V is equal to IR as we had before. So the voltage dropped across the resistance is... Uh, v is equal, so I'm going to do the speaker, so I'm going to call it V speak, okay, which is um, equal to the current, so that's 0 0.7 multiplied by 8 because that's the resistance, and that will give you uh, the voltage drop across it. I said VSP is ideally the answer. Um, so now you've done that, you then need to calculate VC, which is equal to the current times. The reactants and VL, which is again equal to, sorry, that, that should be a C, it looks a bit clearer there, I times XL. And you've done this stuff so many times, I'm not going to go through it here, but the full solutions are a Moodle. But the key thing to solving this is to recognise that you've got these two 8 ohm resistors, which you can combine into a single resistance for the whole circuit, and then you can apply this equation here to find the current and then once you've got the current you can then consider the voltage drop across each of those components and that is how you solve question five so if you've got any other questions do come and talk to me about this and i hope you got there